In Fox 5 Health News, nearly half of all Americans may have high blood pressure. For the first time this is in 14 years, the American Heart Association has changed guidelines that define those at risk for heart disease. All right, joining us now, Fox 5 medical contributor Dr. Debbie Napia Parample from the NYU School of Medicine. So basically, we're defining it down because you can get problems at a lower reading than we thought before. Exactly. So the number of people at risk for a problem hasn't changed. Things are still the same mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, but because the definition has changed, the number of people who will be diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure, that number may change. Now, I, I actually think this is a good thing for a lot of reasons. So for decades, we've had research that shows that high blood pressure causes a lot of harms. Mm -hmm. You know, it increases your risk for a heart attack, increases your risk of having a stroke. It affects the eyes. It affects the kidneys. And that, that risk risk increases at these lower numbers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is, the reason why they were reluctant perhaps to change it sooner is because, you know, high blood pressure causes problems over time, usually. So let's say that you're sitting at 150 over uh, 85, right? Which is now would be considered high blood pressure, right? Um, if you were sitting at that level, maybe you have some symptoms, maybe you don't. Most of the time, you don't know that you have high blood pressure. But over time, this causes a problem, puts you at risk for dying and mm -hmm. for disability, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if your blood pressure is low, mm -hmm. you might know right away. You might feel dizzy, you might faint, you might fall. So especially for people who are a little older, you can have, let's say you break a hip while you have this low blood pressure or something else. So a lot of doctors were really reluctant to prescribe medication or be too aggressive with blood pressure because they thought, well, if I get the blood pressure you know, a little bit lower, what if the person has a problem? They'll see an immediate side effect. Whereas even if it runs a little high, oh, gotcha. they may not notice that mm -hmm. right away. Maybe a problem for another day in the future. Mm. So this is kind of why I think there was a reluctance to change it. But the important thing in the end is we want to save lives. Mm -hmm. And so this change, I think, will be one step closer towards that. Although, you know, if you're younger, you're more likely now because some of these, some of these yeah. creeping up, you know, your sure. blood pressure kind of creeps up. You may be more likely to see a diagnosis of high blood pressure or hypertension than you would have in the past. Gotcha. Um, All right. And Bill Gates joining the fight against Alzheimer's. The billionaire philanthropist says he's personally investing $50 million to help find a treatment for the disease. And I guess this is something that runs in his family. So near and dear to him. Yeah, so I think this is also very promising. I mean, the two points that he made that are important. So a lot of our theories about Alzheimer's disease focus around two different substances. One is called beta amyloid. The other one is called tau. Now, these two, these two uh, substances are found in increased levels in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. So generally, all the funding for Alzheimer's, when it comes to basic science research or what's the cause of Alzheimer's, focuses around these two things. So the point that he made is that what if it turns out those two things are not not the only cause or they're just sort of peripherally related. So sometimes let's say, for example, the body creates more tau to fight Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. right? It's not the cause, but the response. So if there's something like that that happens, then all this time and research, not that it would be a waste, but there would be more delays in figuring out what is the cause, right? So he wants to sponsor more innovative sort of theories to look at, you know, something else potentially involved. And he wants to also focus on creating registries so that it won't be as hard for people to find patients who might participate in the research. So I think these, both these things sound great for Alzheimer's yeah, for and sure. just yeah. in general as an approach for, for disease. a lot of people, that's for sure. All right, Dr. Devin, Thank we you. appreciate it.